I spent the last week with the Nitro 5, more specifically the AMD 4600H and GTX 1650 model. I picked this one up for around $670 from Best Buy, uh, which ends up being around $700 after tax. And honestly, I don't have any complaints about the price point, as for around $700, this is probably the best bet you can get new for a gaming laptop. The performance from the 1650 does outpower any of the Vega graphics that are available from the APUs, so if you're comparing this to, for instance, Lenovo Flex 5 or an IdeaPad 5 or even like an Inspiron 7405 or HP ProBook, you're going to be getting much better GPU performance out of something with a dedicated NVIDIA card uh, pretty much across the board unless it's like an MX350 then there's going to be you know it's going to be close but 1650 and above you'll be getting much better performance overall. So if graphics are the main thing that matter to you then you might just have to go with an option like this. While I've been doing my testing over the last week I did run into a number of weird quirks with the machine some of which that I mentioned uh, during my unboxing impressions and testing live stream. And let's go over a few of them now. Some of them are more obvious, some of them are a little weirder, and we'll just, yeah, I'll just touch on them right now. Uh, first, today we have something that I haven't seen any other reviewers mention, and basically, for some reason, the brightness keys on my unit seem to be kind of backwards, and um, you can see here that this button right here, it has the, like, black sun here, and we have the filled-in sun here, and you'd assume that this one would make it brighter and this one would make it darker, but the thing is, you can see see that if I hit this one, which is the dark colored sun here, the hollow sun, um, you'll see the brightness goes up. But if I filled in sun here, you can see that. I have FN held down and it'll just makes it go darker. And it is really laggy, which is weird. So you'll hit this. It takes a second. But yeah, so this seems a little like it might be a misprint. I don't know what the deal is, but it's it's an odd thing. I don't know why it's like that. Um, I honestly couldn't tell you um, if it's intentional or a screw up by Acer's part, but just something to keep in mind. That so initially I had some concerns over the choice of putting the power button right here on the numpad, which you can see pretty clearly is just kind of incorporated into the keys there. And um, my main concern is that on things like Chromebooks, that can be a bit disruptive because you might hit it when you're hitting backspace. Some other laptops, when you hit the power button, it instantly turns off, even if it's on the keyboard, which can get really annoying. But Acer has made a smart decision here. When you hit it, nothing happens. We have Google Chrome here, and I'm just going to hit the power button over and over. Nothing happens. But if I hold it, you'll see a little thing pops up. And this is the Acer power button menu, which allows you to select what you want to do when you hit the power button. Now, for those of you who just like a simple power button to just put the computer to sleep instantly, you can check this box. And basically what that will do is next time you go and hit the power button, it should pretty much, once you hold it down, it should just put the computer to sleep. Yep. So now the computer is back asleep. If we look at the lights here, you can see the keyboard's still lit up, so it's clearly still trying to go to sleep or something here. Um, let's space. It seems like it's just kind of taking its sweet time, but uh, yeah, when we held the power button down, uh, it would just automatically go into sleep mode after we check that box, and it says you can change that back in Acer something settings, so yeah, that's a nice little feature to have. Let me just try to get this to turn back on now. Okay, well, I guess I just turned it off. I don't know. I think that didn't work, <laughs> unfortunately. It just kind of sat forever and didn't really turn back or turn off. Or... Yeah, that's something I'll have to look into further in the future because that's, you know, the power options should be working when you hit the power button, obviously. One thing worth noting is that this Acer starts up, like, gets to the Acer logo a lot quicker than the Flex 5 does. For some reason, the Flex 5 just takes its sweet time to boot up, but this actually starts fairly quickly, so less of a complaint here for sure. One thing I should mention is that the on-battery performance of the Nitro 5 is quite terrible. Both the GPU and CPU are restricted each to 25 watts, which prevents them from performing above a certain level when the battery is on. While this does benefit battery life somewhat, 
It restricts any sort of like boost performance you might want out of your web browser boosting in the CPU, even some mild GPU boosting, and it certainly impacts game performance by quite a lot. Now this is quite unfortunate because certain gaming laptops from Intel, such as like the Y740 that's way more expensive, can do this on battery gaming. But at the same time, designing a laptop that can do high performance on battery is quite difficult and probably very expensive to do. So I don't give them too much flack for not doing it, especially given the price point. Just be aware that you won't be able to play games at the level you're able to on wall power when you're on battery power. So besides the keyboard power button, and uh, the weird brightness control complaint. I do have some other complaints about the unit. The display seems like it's a pretty like slow 60 hertz panel. And I mean, we'll look that up now. I'll just show you the stats here. Let me just pull this up here. You can see here that this is a NV156FHMN48. And we'll just look that up real quick. And actually Notebook Check has a review on that exact panel from the from an Acer Swift 3 from 2017 and since displays don't change much um, from unit to unit uh, we can just take a look at the specs here and notebook check tested this back in 2017 as having a response time of about 42 milliseconds on uh, gray to gray which is a 22 millisecond rise and a 20 millisecond fall which is fairly slow if we consider that out of a thousand milliseconds which is you know, the milliseconds in a second, 22 of those, that's about 45 updates per second. So this panel, you're going to see it feels a lot slower than any other 60 hertz panel you've used in the past. That's because it is. Um, because a lot of panels, they'll have a response time of about 15 milliseconds in that degree. So they'll have about 66 updates per second without like smearing or lag or anything like that. However, this panel is very slow. It won't feel like 60, it'll feel choppier. And that's just the nature of slow response times. Uh, and again, this is a NV156 FHM N48. So you can look that up if you like. Something else worth mentioning is the charger. If we take a look here, you can see that the charger on the back is plugged in like this. Now, something a lot of reviews on Best Buy have mentioned is that this charger, if you just kind of plug it in, this feels like it's plugged in. But if you look at the lights, you can see that there's no power light because this is the power light and there's nothing. So some people have been going, well, I guess my charger's broken because it feels clicked in and if I pull on it, it just kind of comes out and whatnot. Well, the actual thing is, this <laughs> this is really tight in here. You have to push quite, like, you have to, you have to be quite deliberate with pushing it down and you'll see I'll push harder, it clicks in, and then the light comes on, so. If it seems like your charger's not working, you probably just didn't push the charger in hard enough. So just give that a shot. It probably should start working afterwards, and that should resolve your problem. Another thing worth noting is that this machine only ships with single channel memory out of the box. And only having single channel memory can impact performance to a pretty large degree. Uh, I did some basic GTA testing on my live stream and we didn't really have any issues running GTA but I will be doing tests with dual channel memory in this system and even maybe some better memory just to see what kind of performance we can get out of it with better memory and if it matters I'll also be doing a performance tuning video on this showing that I can squeeze a little bit more performance out of the GTX 1650 in this system to see if we can you know improve it to a point where it can play some better games I'll be doing a general upgrades video for this thing and I'll be installing the drive inside of this external bay I'll be just installing that inside of this laptop with the provided uh, screws and such regarding the screen hinges you can see here um I'll just turn this light off here you can see when I move the hinge around I'll zoom in a little if I move the hinge from this corner you can see that there's like a moderate amount of flex in the panel I'll also do that from this corner. You can see there's a moderate amount of flex. But from the middle, there is minimal flex in the panel. Now on the Flex 5, we would see major distortion here. We can only see distortion around the top, which probably has something to do with the way the lid is internally designed. 
and you can see there's just normally backlight bleed there so that might have something to do with the camera module but outside of that that's not really noticeable my unit doesn't really have backlight bleed in the first place so whatever they're doing with mounting the screen instead of the slid they're doing a good job i will be testing the adobe suite on this machine because i know a lot of people want to see that one thing i should note about this screen is that the delta e on this is about like 4.8 Eight five with a max of like 8.34 so it's quite bad um we do have an icc file um on notebookcheck.net that you can use to calibrate the screen but uh it's just yeah this panel is not the best there are better panels out there for sure but um unfortunately since this laptop's cheap they cheaped out on the panel and that's just kind of expected but uh yeah just the screen is quite bad for gaming uh, you will notice that it is noticeably less smooth and it won't be very nice uh, if you went from like for instance a 144 hertz panel and this likely has something to do with the kind of sentiment that well i came from 144 hertz and i'm now i'm using a 60 hertz panel and it feels slow and it's like well not all 60 hertz is created equal and not all 144 hertz are created equal in fact a lot of 144 hertz panels are quite terrible one last thing before I sign out here, you can see this is NitroSense. Um, I think last time I was using NitroSense, it did seem to use a high amount of CPU doing nothing. And we'll just take a look at this again. And yeah, as you can see, NitroSense is currently not doing anything. And it's using about like 5% of the CPU. I've seen it as high as like 8 at times. I don't know why it, <laughs> why it uses so much CPU power. It's a little weird. Um... Because it's not doing anything, it's just, you know, running a GIF of a fan. I, I don't really know. But yeah, I just make sure to have this off <laughs> when you're um, not using it. Because it seems to be quite annoying. You see, I'll close it. I'll go from like about 8-7% to 7 CPU to like, I don't know, 4-3. Yeah. 2%. <laughs> yeah. 1%. Wow, look at that. That's crazy. 1% CPU usage on a gaming laptop. What? Yeah, and most of it's Discord, so. But yeah, that's all I've really come across in my limited time with the laptop so far. Um, I haven't spent the most time with it over this last week, so I'm going to be spending a lot more time with it in the coming days, seeing if I can find anything that seems to be wrong or something that I need to mention. I'll probably also be running benchmarks and games on it to see how they run. I did have some issues testing Valorant with it because for some reason it wasn't detecting the touchpad input. Um, it was detecting clicks, but it wasn't detecting, like, touchpad movements and I had to use an external mouse so that's something to keep in mind um, but yeah that's all for today and I hope this video was helpful